So to start off with, we're going to do a little, have a little fun with pellets. So you all know what pellets are, right? So pellets are basically the indigestible portions of the food that uh, birds eat uh, that goes, ends up in their gizzard and they're not able to digest it and then they cough it up uh, in the form of a pellet, just like this. Snowy owl coughing up a pellet. Just about all birds, it's not just owls, not just raptors that, that will cough up a pellet. Gulls, crows, anything that's eating, anything that has any shells or bones, uh, even seed cases, uh, shrikes will cough up pellets. And then, of course, what you end up with are these neat little packages that are fascinating because you can really find out what's, what the bird's been eating. So for, for many, many, many years, we've been um, looking at pellets. Uh, to try to work out what birds are eating, and it, it really is amazing what you can find because, of course, mostly the owls in particular are swallowing their food pretty much whole, so you'll get whole skulls, you get whole jaw bones, you can put, put an entire animal back together again uh, that comes out of a pellet. Some other birds, they kind of rip it up a little more, uh, and it's a little harder to put things back together, but we've got a bunch of pellets that you're going to be able to work with. Uh, very simple. You hopefully will get to see things like this. You can identify jaw bones to specific rodents uh, or insectivores, we might find some shrews, we might find some rats, we might find some bird bones, some voles, some mice, depending on what these birds have been eating. The snowy owl pellets, you never know what you might find in there. There could be a cat or a jackal or God knows what, but they're, <coughs> it's amazing what snowy owls will eat. So we do have some snowy owls pellets that you can play with. So we have four tables set up. Um, there are eight chairs around each table, so you can sit in teams. There are tools, there are kits, um, uh, keys to help you identify these are some really nice, pretty solid pellets. So you can just dive in and grab, grab one. There are a variety of tools that you can use to tease things apart, tweezers. And when you get down to actually getting the bones out, you can just brush them off with the little, the little brushes. Okay. And then I got some Oop, more Look, his, his tooth came out. Look how long the teeth are. See, that's the thing that I thought was fascinating. Because like, rodent jaws are ever growing and teeth are ever growing. So they're, they're growing all the way back through the jawbone. There's a vole. Yeah, you can see the little zigzags. And they're sort of grouped. They're fairly little. Are those teeth? Yep, those little teeth, little zigzags. Those are voles. Oh my god. Okay. So, where's my little teeth go? Are, are these? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is kind of fun if you can. You can hold, hold this and then use, I can hold it for you to get some good light. And these little, these little inner circles are more magnification. You can zoom right in on the teeth and you can see the zigzag. So you see how the teeth are all zigzaggy. Yeah, so that's a bowl. That's a bowl, yeah. Everything I've seen so far is a bowl. And these are all bowl pieces, right? What's the zigzag we're seeing? So the, uh, the teeth of the, the voles are all zigzaggy, whereas a mouse has got, they're like, they're almost like our molars. They're individual little, little teeth. But everything I've looked at have been have been voles of some sort. Oh yeah, that shows the shows the the ziggy zag vole teeth really well. So any voles are going to have these very sort of zig zigzag teeth, sort of serrated, whereas the mouse or the rat have they look sort of like our molars so there's one there one there so you got three there in a row these sort of rounded more rounded teeth and so far i haven't seen anything but voles of what we've come out of these pellets which is the most common prey so my crotus is is by far the mo one of the most common prey items in for barn owls and as, so that's what that which is what we're seeing here so let me show you this this is kind of a fun one Mm. So the two jaw bones and the oh, skull are still still, atta still attached. Ah. Got the two jaw bones and the skull still held together pretty much as they were swallowed. So no skull but just the jaw bones. But quite a few. One, two, three, four, five. So there would have been at least three critters in there. Has anyone seen a shrew? Jawbone. I've got a fantastic little tiny shrew jawbone here. Just tiny. They have this tooth that sticks out straight out in the front. And when they're fresh, they still have a little red tip. You can almost see a little dark tip on that tooth. But they have the dark, dark red tip on the end. And 
serrated little teeth for, as insectivores. Yeah, this should show, let's see, one of these keys shows the teeth, shows the shrew skull. Yep, there we go. So you can see how it's stiff. got these little pointy teeth and then the long one that sticks out in the front. Tiny, tiny little thing. <laughs> That's out of a barn owl as well. Also the barn. Yeah. There might be several in there. That'd be a little a little snack. <laughs> little amuse bouche for the bar the barn owl. It's like a Oh. Well, they're actually what are called an insectivore. Mm. So they're Oh, they only eat insects. They only eat insects, so they're a little bit different from the no. the mouse and vole group. In a separate family from rodents. But do they look like a rodent? Uh, the little furry, the furry thing, but a yeah, long, thing. elongated head. Mm. And uh, wow, they're that. underground, so they, they dig around underneath the ground. and So they're, they're somewhat related, they're related to moles. That's just one half of his jawbone. That's just one, yeah, one jawbone, yep. Okay. Yeah, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. What's the, what's the difference? A mole is actually related to shrews. It's an insectivore. It's the, the family. Um, and it's a burrow. It's the burrowing one that's digging, on the, digging the little tunnels in your, in your lawn. Voles are related to mice. They're rodents. And you'll actually see quite you fairly, you'll not infrequently see voles. They're about this big, stubby little tail. It's a mouse with a real stubby tail, basically. Yes, so in the taming of the shrew, there's a whole soliloquy where Petruccio is talking about how he's going to tame Kate. And it's, a, it's all about falconry. It's how you train a wild hawk. And if you're not a falconer, you have no idea what he's talking about. But if you are a falconer, and Shakespeare was a falconer, you read that and you say, yeah, that's what I would do with a hawk I just took out of the wild and I'm going to train to hunt. Talks about cutting her down and her weight down, and, and it's all a bunch of falconry terms that almost no one understands except falconers. So Shakespeare was a falconer. Yep, everybody was a falconer back then. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Long tail vole. Well, it's not probably not a long tail vole, but all the voles will have teeth that have that pattern. So these are probably Microtus pennsylvanicus, the meadow vole. And meadow vole actually means meadow meadow because vole is Swedish for meadow. So, <laughs> so here's a couple of um, prey items that were found at a snowy owl roost and they're clearly not from a pellet. But that's a mallard wing. And this is, um, Ian thinks, a muir, a common muir. Um, it's in the, related to the uh, guillemots and the puffins, it's in the uh, alcid family. Mm -hmm. So we know that's a bird, it's a big sternum, there's a nice coracoid, and the, I mean, sorry, the, the furculus got the wishbone, the coracoid, the scapula, so those are the three bones that come together, the, the um, furcula, the coracoid, and the scapula, and so that's where that, the lifting muscle goes up over the, uh, coracoid through that little hole and it attaches to the wing and that would lift the wing up when it that's probably the tendon from it wow, yeah. so nice big big sternum so a powerful flyer and a nice strong uh, furcula so again a, a powerful flyer there's the foot so the foot is, this is the whole foot of a muskrat that, that's still in, in, one, in one piece. So this is the pelvis, that's where the um, femur, here we go. Yeah. So this is really cool. This is from a snowy owl um, and it's a muskrat. So. That's the whole foot of the muskrat, still, oh, wow. still with all the, foot, the toe bones together, or the foot bones part. Yeah. And then yeah. here is the pelvis yeah. and the femur. Oh, the fits right in. Goes right wow. in the ball and socket joint. Oh. 
How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, I love this stuff.